As the NHL All-Star break continues, we have some more NHL teams to analyze their plans ahead of the NHL trade deadline. Today, we're looking at teams like the Boston Bruins, the New York Rangers, the Philadelphia Flyers, Detroit Red Wings, and New Jersey Devils. We'll jump into all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned today, we're analyzing some more NHL trade deadline plans that we might see here. We're now just under a month away from the deadline. There's all kinds of rumors, all kinds of potential activity that we might see. I want to kick things off today looking at the New York Rangers. Now, of course, the player on the Rangers we talk about the most leading into the deadline and all the rumors are focusing on is mostly forward Chris Kreider, who's attending the NHL All-Star Game, needs a new contract, and likely he's going to get one of the bigger returns, assuming he is traded by the NHL trade deadline. One update we can say is listening to TSN uh, analyst Frank Cervelli discuss the potential return package for a guy like Kreider. He believes it's going to take a first round pick as well as a prospect to land the big rugged winger in a trade ahead of the deadline. Like as I mentioned before, I thought the Rangers would be looking for a minimum of a first rounder considering they obtained that for Kevin Hayes last year. Uh, and this guy is actually going to be a little bit more in demand, I think. If you really look around most trade bait boards around uh, different analysts covering the NHL, Kreider's right at the top. There's been a report that there's no new contract uh, extension talks taking place, so the likelihood of him being dealt is significantly high, and there's lots of interest from a variety of teams. But today, I really want to focus on the fact that the Rangers might have other players in play. It's not just Chris Kreider and the Rangers, even though he gets most of the attention. We're also looking at some potential moves from guys like Orion Strome, for example whose contract's also up. Ryan Strom's having a really solid year for the Rangers. Uh, he has been asked about this publicly, and he's indicated he'd like to remain with the New York. He likes the fact that things have gone well, uh, works well with the coaching staff, teammates, likes living in the area. Really lots of positives about being a Ranger for him. Uh, so it certainly could see what can happen, but the one concern that many people think that could cause them to trade Strom would be the fact that he's having a solid year and they may not want to pay what he wants in this next contract, and that could cause them to move him out given the fact that he's not all that old, but he's old enough, I guess, that they could want to give the spot to a younger, less expensive contractor. It just really depends on how things go. Now, speaking of younger players that are doing well and likely going to be looking for a significant raise, could also bring us to the defenseman Tony D'Angelo, who's having a really solid breakout year for the Rangers, uh, putting up all kinds of points. Uh, he's a pending RFA, and he's going to be looking for a significant amount of money on a longer-term deal, I would think. He did pretty good last year, too, so that's a couple of years of proving himself. I think he's going to be looking for a big raise. And as much as it makes a lot of sense for the Rangers to keep him and sign him to a longer-term contract, when you have other guy, other contracts on the blue line like Jacob Truba and Brady Shea, uh, they very well could move him. Now, I'm not necessarily thinking or saying that they should, uh, but it is possible, uh, mostly depending on what they feel they want to spend on him moving forward, I guess. Now, another player who's generated some interest on the Rangers too and could become available is forward Pavel Buchnevich. Now, Buchnevich is a player who can be very productive at times, but been inconsistent uh, a lot and could have also be a guy the Rangers consider moving. And another player that's been mentioned as well as forward, Jesper Fass, who's a really consummate professional. And there's been some talk the Rangers might decide to keep him around as one of the veteran players to help with their younger guys developing as he's a very popular player in the room. Uh, certainly leads by example, plays hard, and lots of the other intangibles that they value off the ice. So he might end up sticking around, but also a guy needing a new contract who could find himself wearing a new jersey come the nhl trade deadline now let's jump over here and take a look at the detroit red wings now there are some reports indicating that veteran defenseman trevor daly has asked to be traded ahead of the deadline to a contending team i guess fortunately for daly he does have a form of a no trade clause so if he is moved he will have some sort of control over where his possible destination might be not really sure there's a whole lot of interest in a player like him, but the, you know certainly could be added for the right price tag, I guess. I don't see teams giving up a whole lot. He's certainly uh, getting into his later 30s. He's a pending UFA. Uh, not really having the greatest season, but then again, the Red Wings are a really weak team. He mentioned teams like Dallas, Colorado, and Vegas as being potential suitors for Daly. Uh, I'm not really sure he would really be what they're looking for. It's possible they could all look to add 
uh, on the blue line. Just not really sure he's the answer. So I guess we'll see what happens with Daly. Um, but where he does have a form of a no-trade clause, reports are indicating he at least is willing to waive, if necessary, to have a shot at winning another Stanley Cup. So I guess we'll see. But the other bigger picture with Detroit, the one player who's been making uh, rounds on the NHL trade bait boards uh, that could generate more of a return would be forward Andreas Athanasiu, who's certainly uh, having a down season, but he certainly is one of the faster skaters in the league. Uh, only a year removed from being a 30-goal scorer. He's a pending RFA, so he needs a new contract. Of course, he's gone through some pretty contentious negotiations with the Red Wings in the past, so uh, hammering out a new contract could be difficult, but one team that's certainly been linked to them, possibly showing some interest. Not going to say for sure that they would make the move, but uh, I would, would maybe watch the Edmonton Oilers in this situation. Uh, Ken Holland, of course, their GM, former GM of the Red Wings, quite familiar with Athanasiu. They certainly need help on the wings, and he is an incredibly fast skater and going to be a guy who could keep up with guys like McDavid and Drysaddle and could find his scoring touch again playing in a better situation on a stronger team. So I wouldn't completely rule out the fact that even though he's a younger player, given the fact that they have other younger guys that I see as more um, core players who wouldn't be moved, like Larkin and Mantha and Zadina, uh, Ronick, etc., I can see Athanasiu potentially being a trade chip that the Red Wings could use to bring back some future assets and maybe he could refine his game playing in another organization. Now, there's some reports from Boston Hockey Now's Jimmy Murphy indicating that he has sources saying that the Boston Bruins could actually consider trading young defenseman Charlie McAvoy to find a scoring winger to play in their top six. Clearly, they need another scoring winger to really balance out their scoring and have two solid scoring lines. They've had a hard time getting two solid wingers to play with David Krejci in that second line a lot over the years. It's been a while since they've had a consistent spot there where uh, those six players in the top six are you know always playing. Of course, the perfection line up front with Bergeron, Marchand, and Pasternak are very reliable, and sometimes they are moved around uh, to kind of spread things out. But Jake DeBrusque has played well uh, a lot with Krejci, uh, so it certainly would be nice for them to have, I guess, to have that extra winger. They could kind of remain there. So I guess the advantage of trading McVoy, the rationale behind this would be that they could use his uh, contract as somebody that could be like money in, money out, bring back a younger forward with term, and I guess you have to give up value to get value, and that's the rationale behind the uh, the, the source here, indicating that that's something they would consider if the right young forward was made available to them. Not really sure that would be a wise move. I'm not really sure there's a lot to that rumor. I, I kind of understand the rationale of why they would want that type of player, and I do agree that you have to give up value to get value, but I'm not really sure that moving a young guy like McAvoy would really be all that wise. I mean, I guess they do have some salary cap constraints. They might find it difficult to retain defenseman Tory Krug, who certainly helps drive a lot of the offense there in Boston, and I guess moving out uh, McAvoy's contract would be helpful in retaining Krug, but then... Either way, you're taking away a solid blue liner uh, out of the mix. You are adding in another forward, which I guess would be helpful. Just not really sure that's the right deal, but I guess if you're a Bruins fan especially, I'd like to hear from you in the comments. If you could move Charlie McAvoy and obtain a really solid top six forward, somebody who could play consistently, be a 25 to 30 goal scorer in that second line, is that a move that you would make? Now let's jump over and look quickly at the Philadelphia Flyers. They're a team who very well could be a playoff team, but all it's going to take is a bad streak of uh, in a couple of weeks, and they could be out of it as well. It's just kind of not guaranteed at this point. They're not in a solid enough position to say for sure, so they're likely going to kind of take a wait-and-see approach over the next couple of weeks, but it seems to be the main area that they would kind of focus on would be adding some depth to the center position, given the fact that there's a still a big question mark lingering over young center iceman Nolan Patrick, who hasn't played, dealing with a lot of uh, migraine-type issues, and it's really unclear what the long-term uh, impacts are going to be for him uh, in this season or even beyond, really. I've heard remarks from GM Chuck Fletcher indicating he's confident that uh, Patrick will play this year, but it's yet to happen, and they might want some insurance ahead of the deadline, so maybe a cheap option to add somebody who can be like a third fourth line center maybe like a, a Nate Thompson in Montreal a Trevor Lewis for example with the LA Kings Lewis would be a great character player to play a center in the bottom six as well of course Dean Lombardi is quite familiar with him a former GM of the Kings of course he works for the Flyers now so could be some influence in that regard uh, so I think those are some easier cheaper moves it wouldn't cost a whole lot to kind of help uh, give some extra depth heading into the playoffs 
But the other name that keeps popping up on the trade bait board is quite high on TSN's trade bait board right now is defenseman Shane Gossesbear, which I'm not really sure really should be up there. But according to their sources, they do have reason to believe that there's a good possibility that he could be traded. Now, uh, Gossesbear is not having a great season. Last year wasn't a great season for him. He has, I think it's three more years left on his contract. Uh, it's a reasonable value if he can get back playing the way he used to. Maybe he just needs to work under a different system, a different coach. Not really sure exactly what needs to change to get his game back, but Goss's Bears name certainly keeps popping up there, uh, and you keep hearing from guys on TSN like Frank Sarah Valley indicating that he still feels there's a, a higher likelihood that he could be moved, which is why he has him so high on that trade bait board, but that's the one player that I'm not really sure of. I don't know that it's going to happen. I think that it is possible the Flyers could move him, but it's more likely going to be an off-season deal. But uh, I think more likely the Flyers don't do anything too drastic. They maybe add some depth and uh, try to solidify things before we get too close to the deadline. Now, the last team I want to analyze today is the New Jersey Devils, who are clearly going to be sellers considering how low in the standings they are right now. Of course, things have not gone well. We've had a change in GM. We've had a change in coach. And now we're about to see some trades to shake up this roster. Of course, they already got started earlier with Ray Shiro trading Taylor Hall before he himself was removed as GM. Uh, of course, that likely would have happened anyways. But the list of other players who are very likely to be moved include defenseman Sammy Votnin, who's a 28-year-old pending UFA. He could be a great rental piece on the blue line for many teams looking to make a playoff run. And there's also a veteran defenseman, Andy Green, who's 37 years old. He's been the captain of the team. He's a pending UFA. He does have a form of a no-trade clause, so he can certainly dictate his future. And there's no real clear indication yet what his thoughts would be on waiving that. But certainly he's somebody uh, who could go to a team looking for some extra defensive depth, some veteran presence back there, and can provide some leadership as well. So wouldn't be totally shocking to see Green move, but like I said, where he does have that no trade, it's not clear yet if that's something that he would be willing to accept or not. And there's also veteran forward Wayne Simmons, who I believe has made comments recently indicating he would prefer to stay in New Jersey and finish the season out. But I guess where he doesn't have a form of a no trade protection in his contract, We'll have to remain to be seen if the Devils feel the same way about that and keep him on. They very well could move him out. It probably makes a lot of sense to try to recoup an asset and for him to move on during the offseason. But I guess only time will tell if that takes place. A couple of forwards, though, that they do have that very well could prove to be a decent return. Or a couple of guys with a little bit of term left in their contract. Not quite clear what the plans are. But between uh, Kyle Palmieri and Blake Coleman, they're both forwards who could certainly generate some interest. Maybe bring more of a return, some more future assets who could help New Jersey kind of kick things off here in their rebuild. Um, it's not quite clear for sure that they want to trade them, but clearly some guys who could generate some interest. Their contracts are reasonable. They've proven with, throughout their careers that they can be a scorer and play a middle six role. Uh, even at times, uh, like Palmieri has played top line in, with New Jersey before, uh, so he could certainly be a piece that could fit with a variety of NHL teams, really, and I'm sure they're going to be getting calls on these guys given the fact that, like I said, with their proven record uh, and being a decent player, they get reasonable contracts with a little bit of term left. So it's just a matter of if the price is going to be good enough for them to consider making a move. Interim GM Tom Fitzgerald is going to have a lot of interesting decisions to make ahead of the deadline. We'll see how he tries to remake this team, maybe in a little bit different direction than his predecessor, Ray Shiro, and see if he can get them back on track and can eventually get this thing to the point where they're a lot more consistent team playing a lot better. So we'll see what happens with New Jersey as we head to the deadline. That is all your latest updates for today. Of course, as always, we'll know your thoughts and opinions on all the potential trades we might see heading into the NHL trade deadline. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and we'll continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on your notifications, and checking out our membership options as well, which certainly helps support the channel, and I'd appreciate it if you did. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I will catch you next time. Thank you.